and, and on behalf of the Sambat Initiative, I want to thank you for coming to the FCC today to talk about the third anniversary of the disappearance of our friend uh, Sambat Somhan. Uh, we have a very interesting panel. We also have uh, uh, some new CCTV uh, footage which we, which we will show and uh, explain further. Uh, so without further ado, uh, I'm going to ask first uh, Sam Zarifi uh, from the International Commission of Jurists to speak. Uh, he'll be followed by uh, the member of the advisory board of the Sambat Initiative, Kun Ankana Nila Pejit. Uh, then uh, we will hear from Laurent Melan from the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. And then at the end, I'll say a few words. Uh, we'll have questions at the end of the press conference. Uh, this is a press conference about the situation in Laos. So I would uh, request that you focus uh, those, your questions on those matters. If there are other questions for panelists you want to have about other issues, uh, try to find that panelist after the press conference, and I'm sure that person will be happy to speak to you. So without further ado, Sam. Thanks, Phil. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's it's uh, hard to believe that it's actually uh, the third year now since uh, Sambat Sampon disappeared. You may remember that on the 15th of December, at uh, in 2012, uh, Sambat and his wife Shui Ming were heading back uh, towards their home at about 6 p.m. and uh, they took different cars. Sambat, as usual, was in his uh, classic American Jeep, so a very recognizable car. And the last thing that uh, we know of Sambat is that he was stopped at a checkpoint, uh, apparently by the police, and that was the last time that he was seen. Uh, naturally, Sambat's family and friends and colleagues have been uh, looking for him and trying to check his fate and his whereabouts. And of course, it's also the legal obligation of the government of the Lao PDR to find Sambat and to provide information to his family while they're doing so. For those of you who are interested in the legal issues, uh, this memorandum on the legal issues surrounding Sambat's case by the ICJ is, is in the back. And it, this is important because there are very strong indications that this is a case of enforced disappearance. That means a disappearance. That means something where there's a, a suspicion that somebody has been taken by the government or with the acquiescence of the government and no information about that abduction has been made available. That's, that's an enforced disappearance. It's been called by many one of the worst human rights violations because not only do you have the terrible nature of the abduction, uh, you have no idea what happens to that person because the whereabouts of that person is not known. The possibility of bad things being done to that person uh, are very high. And of course, the anguish of the family who ha doesn't have any information about what's happened and whose legal status is, is unclear. The uh, Lao PDR has signed the International uh, Convention on Civil and Political Rights and the Convention Against Torture, both of which require the government to investigate any uh, enforced disappearances. It has also signed, but not yet ratified, uh, the International Convention that is dedicated specifically to enforce disappearances, called the Convention uh, Against Enforced Disappearances. By signing that document, the uh, government of Laos has obligated itself to uh, follow, at least, or, or at least not violate, the spirit of that, of that convention. So all of the attention and all of the pressure, I think, uh, of the family of Shui Ming and of the Sambat Initiative has been on the government of Laos to satisfy this legal obligation. Shui Meng and Sambat's family, along with many of us here, certainly the ICJ, have uh, tried to get information repeatedly from the Laotian government. And uh, last year, 
uh, working together with international experts, we put out this document, which is uh, a very detailed examination of basically how you would investigate an enforced disappearance, such as Sombats, and gave very concrete recommendations to the Lao PDR government on how to investigate this uh, enforced disappearance. And one of the key factors there uh, has been to get some sense from the Laotian government on what they have done. Have they, have they interviewed people? Have they looked for other evidence? And, and uh, we don't know. At the time, our international experts view was, and a year later it remains, that this case is eminently solvable. That there should be enough information, electronic uh, and individual, that would allow the investigators to either locate Sambat or uh, at least identify witnesses who can give some, shed some light on, on uh, where he is and, and, and what happened to him uh, on that day three years ago. Meanwhile, in the last three years, the family, of course, had also been in contact. They had done uh, what they could. They, they looked around the area where Sombat was taken and uh, tried to get some more information uh, of, of what happened. So far, the, the key information that we had had about Sombat's disappearance was taken from a uh, government closed circuit TV um, camera, uh, which is called Camera One. And, and you can see that Sombat was, was stopped at a very busy intersection. Uh, this is the footage that we have had in the past. You can see um, Sombat's, if you can follow the cursor, Sombat's Jeep, very recognizable, stopped here at the checkpoint. You can see somebody is talking to Sombat through the passenger side window. And then traffic is moving around him. So far, you can see that basically everything is normal. Now, Sombat gets out, moves behind. Now, just to remind you that this is not the original footage. This was the footage that the government had. In the first couple of weeks after Sombat's disappearance, his family went to the police and asked if they had seen something, and they showed the family this footage. And so this was videotaped, or I think digitally copied, by the family from the screen. So this is a shot of a screen. And that's important because you can see the cameras moving, but we're also not seeing the entire picture. This is not of the entire CCTV area, but rather just really focusing on on uh, Sombat's Jeep and kind of what happened. Again, you see now these uh, pedestrians coming through. They walk right through the area. You see they're going between Sombat's Jeep and whatever is going on here, which is where Sombat is right now. And Again, this strongly indicates that this was a regular police checkpoint. We know that there is a checkpoint at that intersection. This is something uh, that obviously people didn't find hugely unusual or, or alarming. Now, uh, we start seeing now some other developments. And again, this is all that we've, we've known. Um, 
Sombat here is talking. It's not clear, unfortunately, in this video to, to uh, somebody who appears to be uh, keeping him. Now, we see someone who is not Sombat get in the Jeep and drive it away. So this was the last that we had seen of, of Sambat. And, and the Laotian government had said that they had done all of the investigation, that there was no more information, at least that they could share with the family or with anyone else, uh, and that they had chased the information down uh, as far as they could. As it happened, uh, Sambat's family just casually walk down that road. This is Sombat now uh, moving, if I can show you guys. Yeah, I'll, so let me just quickly, this is, you can see the side of the abduction. That right angle thing that is a lamppost where the CCTV camera, the official CCTV camera on it is. And you can see the location of other CCTV cameras down that road. Sombat was stopped here, and we saw his Jeep moving southbound, basically out of Vientiane. And this, these are official CCTV camera sites that, as far as we know, the Laotian government has never explained whether they have looked for footage from this, but it, I don't know if you guys can quite read this. This is a very um, kind of a high profile strip of road. We have the Australian Embassy Club right down the road. We have the Singapore Embassy, UNICEF, the Mongolian Ambassador's Residence, the Polish Embassy, the, Japan, the Japanese Ambassador's Residence. So multiple locations that we would expect have CCTV cameras installed at the uh, at their gates, and again, this is something that the family and ICJ have pointed out to the Laotian government. As far as we know, uh, the only response that they've given is that they have ser searched everything, and they they haven't seen anything useful. So uh, the family just wanted to remind them that. A while back, they already offered this footage from a shop that is just down the road. That is, if I can just point that again, is south of south of the site of abduction and on the other side of the street. So now what we have is the camera aimed south. We have a clear set of time. We have a Time stamp at 1807. And then we see Sombat's Jeep being driven off southbound without its lights on. The Jeep drives out of the camera. This is something that we've put together. This is a much longer uh, raw footage uh, of this camera. So then a few minutes later, not even a few minutes later, uh, still looking south we now see Sombat's Jeep being driven back. So the Jeep basically went down the road to the first place it could make a U-turn and turned back towards Vientiane. Without its lights on, incidentally. And we have a very clear timestamp now 
of when that happened. Now, this is another CCTV camera looking north. Again, at that time, you see Sombat's Jeep being driven without its lights on southbound. That's the Jeep right there. And then the Jeep goes down past the median. and turns around and goes back. Again, that's Sombath's Jeep heading north. Now, actually, we know that Sombath is not driving the Jeep at this point. But this is significant for a couple of reasons. One is that it gives police investigators a very clear idea of which direction the Jeep was moving in and where to look for more evidence. And, and it's a very distinctive car, so it shows up very clearly in this kind of uh, footage. Now, what happened to Sombat, though? He was, he was taken out of the Jeep, so now he's still at the checkpoint. He's in a, uh, you can't quite make it back here. So we see there are motorcyclists waiting back there, a pickup truck with flashing lights comes in. Sombat gets in. And the pickup truck drives off. This is the last known footage of Sombath himself in that pickup truck with the flashing lights going down. Let me just come back for one second. Now this pickup truck, unfortunately, is a much more common model. It's, it's much more difficult to see it, except for the flashing lights. And the only other hint we have about it is that there isn't any traffic behind it. It's basically got two or three motorcycles coming behind it. So just keep that in mind. You see there is no two, three beats. There's nothing following it. So now we go back to camera number two, looking southbound. And we can just see the flashing lights that go by with the long traffic behind it. So that seems like it's Sombat heading south, southbound. We'll see it again with the flashing lights from the northbound, north looking camera. You can see right there on the other side of the street, the truck going down, followed by the motorcycles. Now, we've basically searched this video for quite some time, looking afterwards. And at least what we didn't see is a pickup truck that matched that description with flashing lights going down. But because we can't read the, li the license plate number on it, we're, we're not sure. But what we do know is that at least immediately, Sombat got in a pickup truck with flashing lights, and it went southbound uh, outside of VNTN. And that's the uh, last that we've heard. So this is where we are now with the government of Lao PDR. 
We have asked them repeatedly, and Sombat's family have asked them repeatedly, to check these official check, uh, CCTV sites and to ask whether any of these other sites have uh, any CCTV footage. We've asked them to check for any signals from uh, mobile phones to interview people who may have may, may not have been on the street at that time. And again, in particular, with Sombat's car, because it's so distinctive, it would be relatively easy to see if people had known anything. And where we are today, three years later, is a government that has indicated it has no political will to investigate this case as it is obliged to do, uh, and who has not provided any further information to Sombat's family, and therefore is in clear violation of its international obligations, of its national obligations, and yet today, three years later, this is evidence that the family just found by casually walking down the street. And so our sense is that this case still remains eminently solvable. This is a case that should be solved, and we think it's a case that could be solved if the government of the Lao People's Democratic Republic uh, takes its obligation seriously. Thanks. Phil? Great. Thank you very much, Sam, for that uh, long explanation about what we see in the video uh, and the failure of the Lao government to effectively investigate this. Uh, quite clearly what we see now is the, the Lao government sort of playing for time, hoping that the, uh, the families and the people who care about Sombat uh, will let this go, will forget about this. Uh, we're not going to do so, and, and to uh, say a little bit more, uh, I'd like to turn it now over to Kun Ankana. Uh, to speak on behalf of the Sombat Initiative. Yes. Um, thank you very much, Phil, and good morning, everybody. I remember well that first time I am here at FCCT was on 12 January 2006, the day that the criminal court read the verdict of the disappearance of my husband, Som Chai Nilapajit. I am here on this stage many times during the past 11 years on behalf of the families of the disappeared or the chairperson of the human rights organization or on behalf of Sombat Initiative. And today, I am now on this stage again on my new position as National Human Rights Commissioner. But please allow me to speak on behalf of the family of the disappeared. As time flies, but things doesn't change, it happened again and again of enforced disappearance in the country and the region, and truth and justice still not, <coughs> still not delivered to the victims and the families. For Sombat Sompon, it is now three years of his disappearance despite the fact that many civil society groups in Laos are afraid to speak the name of Sombat and his work, and vision continued in various ways and mostly led by some of the young people that he had trained through the youth development program. For example, the community development and empowerment, young people in Laos were trained by Padak continue to support community development and empowerment activities. They use the techniques learned from Sombat to conduct community needs assessment and planning together with community groups to collectively identify problems. Second, Sombat support to women for development small local businesses. In Laos, people in the community, especially women, are helped to start small development enterprises, such as handmade products like cotton and silk scarf and textile, which are then sold through products, network enterprises. As a result, many community groups, especially women, can continue their culture of 
uh, making local handicrafts earn incomes to supplement their family's economic needs and continue to care of their families and promoting the organic farming. All of these are just some examples that Sombat Somporn Visions has continued despite the fear that prevails in Laos among civil society groups. Resuming, Sombat wife believed that Sombat Vision was sustainable development, especially for the poor. The continued trap as there is no force in the world can kill a good idea or disappear people's aspirations for a better world of themselves and their children. As a human cannot be here today, may I take this opportunity to convey her message to all of you on the occasion of three years anniversary of Sombat Sompon disappearance. Shuming said that after three years of Sombat's disappearance, the pain and burden continues and does not lessen with time. As his wife, I continue to bear the pain and burden every minute of the day. It is like a knife that is permanently embedded in my heart and nothing can take that pain away. Most days, I feel numbed by the pain and exhausted by the search of answers which seem never to come. It is even more exhausting when the state refuses to come clean about what happened. Despite clear evidence sure of what happened on the night of Sobat disappearance. Xu Ming also said that there are times when the burden of pain and despise seem too heavy to bear. We, families of the disappeared, are after all only human beings of flesh and blood and emotions. We are not machines, but we will not give up our struggle, however difficult it may be. For me, after three years, I understand that it is no longer my personal struggle. It is our collective struggle as a human family. It is for the sake of our human dignity, and it is our rights. In Thailand, the cases of Somchai Nila Pajit, Billy, Apology Rak Chung Jerun, and other cases of enforced disappearance still be the burden of the families to struggle for truth and justice. Thailand has no specific law to criminalize enforced disappearance. It requires the bringing of the body of the disappear as the evidence to prove the guilty. Weakness among law enforcement agencies, including among others, Department of Special Investigation, has led to cases of enforced disappearance being intervened by influential people. It has incurred feeble human rights protection mechanisms, inefficient witness protection program, and many problems as to the